You know, I just love the aroma of rain. There's nothing like a rain after a long dry period. It's a life force that brings, well, the lawns back to life. My big trees respond within a day and the animals, well, they just seem happier and healthier. But you know, when it rains, we have to stay inside, which isn't such a bad thing. And while that means you may be spending a little more time inside, there's no reason why you shouldn't enjoy a rainy day. So what I thought we'd check into today are just some fun ways to explore what one can do on a rainy day. Let's get started. You know, when it comes to being prepared for disaster, hang on just a minute. There's some things you ought to have on hand. And it really doesn't take a lot of time to do this. And if disaster ever strikes in the way of major storm system, hurricane, tornadoes, or even an earthquake, it pays to have some things in place. One of the first things you wanna make sure you have is plenty of water. FEMA recommends that you have at least one gallon per person per day, and you need at least a three-day supply. And when it comes to food, think of canned goods, and think of canned goods that don't require any kind of heating, because you never know, you may not have electricity or a source of power to heat the food, and also choose things that are high in protein. You know, these with the pool lids are nice, uh, but if they don't have a pool lid, make sure you have a can opener, otherwise it's gonna be tough to get in there. You wanna make sure you have a source of light in the way of candles, plenty of candles, and ways to light the candles. Matches are great, but if it's really wet, you need some other device that'll make sure you get a flame. And of course, you don't wanna be without flashlights or batteries. And then you need to think about communication. Hey, what if you don't have cell phone service? What about walkie-talkies? They're pretty inexpensive, actually. It's a great way to communicate. Just make sure you have batteries. And the other thing is you get a national weather report with these, which can be very helpful. It's very handy to have a radio. Just make sure you have plenty of batteries to go along with them. And then, of course, there's hygiene. You're gonna want some toiletries, some soap, and then when it comes to medical, you need a first aid kit and always have some peroxide. Keep a first aid kit packed away. And I tell you, what I like to do is have one of these plastic containers where you can put a plastic top on it, you can seal it away, and it's completely waterproof. These are some pretty basic things that you'll need. They'll put you in good stead. Coming up, plants you can enjoy indoors, a rainy day design tip from designer Toby Fairley, and a structure that maximizes the benefits that rain provides. No matter what the weather is doing outside, to get your daily dose of the garden, you can always create a little oasis in your bathroom. You see, so many of the plants that thrive in tropical areas are perfect for the bathroom because of all of the warmth and moisture and humidity that comes from your shower and bath. It's really simple to create your own personal little garden indoors, but there are a few things you're going to want to keep in mind. For instance, mirrors are very helpful. You see, they reflect lots of light, and hey, your plants love light. And the way I look at it, the more light you have, the more plants you can have, and that's a good thing. You'll also want to turn your plants regularly to avoid uneven growth, and you don't want to overwater. Too much love can kill them. You see, the room's high humidity will help keep your plants damp. Oh yeah, and this is an important one. I don't recommend using any glass containers where bare feet are at risk. So go for containers that are made of, of plastic or a resin or some sort of composite, even wood or metal. Ah, now let's get to some of the plants. Some of my favorites include aloe vera, begonia, Boston fern, well, really all kinds of ferns, cast iron plant, Chinese evergreens, orchids, peace lilies, spider plants, diffenbachia, those all work well in low light bathrooms, but if you have a really sunny bathroom, you might consider asparagus fern, even a gardenia, and orchids love it. 
Then of course, you need to feed your plants to keep them happy. I recommend feeding only when they're in a growth cycle. In other words, spring through summer and begin to back off during the fall and don't feed them in the winter months. So come rain or shine, you can create a little indoor oasis that will make you and your plants very happy. So give it a try. I know you're hungry. There you go. You're going to love that. You're looking so good. Another easy way to keep your plants well hydrated is by creating a microclimate. Garden Style heads to the kitchen just after the break. When it's all drizzly outside, there's nothing I enjoy more than a nice warm bowl of soup. Chef John Mooney shares his recipe for asparagus and pistachio soup. Now that's something that will take any rainy day experience to an upper level. It's one of my favorites. I'm John Mooney. This is my restaurant here, Bell Book and Candle. On my rooftop, I have a hydroponic garden, which means it requires no soil. The menu revolves around what's, what's available uh, on the roof. Good asparagus soup comes from good asparagus. But the process is very simple. We do use our blender to get texture, but there's nothing added to it other than pistachios, shallots, and asparagus. First, you start with some shallot. Shallot, some, a mild onion. Uh, use about four shallots. I try to uniformly slice these. What I'm going to do is take some pistachio oil. We're going to sweat these. So sweating means I'm going to cook them gently without adding any color. So there's pistachio oil there. I use about an ounce of oil. And I could use less oil, but I love the flavor of it. I think it contributes to the dish. I'm also going to add some pistachios, about two ounces of pistachios. I'm going to toast these up and sweat everything together. I'm going to stir that up. As you can see, it's, it's a very light, light heat, very, very gentle. Here you can see uh, the shallots are wilted. I can smell the beautiful pistachio flavor coming out. The stock I use in this dish I make out of asparagus, straight asparagus. You could use vegetable stock, you could buy vegetable stock, you could use chicken stock if you don't want a vegetarian. For this small batch, I'm gonna add about two cups. One whole bunch of asparagus. So I take the asparagus stalks, I cut them into small pieces. Once the asparagus stock comes to a simmer, then I'm going to add this right in there. And we're gonna cook this for approximately five minutes. We wanna maintain that freshness and that beautiful green color as well. Season it with salt and pepper. Don't cook it too much, and then blend it all together. I finish it off with some slices of asparagus, then lightly cooked. 
and then a little bit of the pistachio oil. I think the final outcome is very interesting. It's very homey and comforting. There's a nice texture. I think it's a good rainy day soup. I just think it's nice to have lighter, simpler options. When we return, we'll get cozy with designer Toby Fairley and explore a rain-centric rooftop in New Jersey. You know, organizing a closet is one of those things that I don't know about you, but I never seem to find the time to get around to do. In my house, the closets often get filled up with all kinds of things, even the guest closets. When you have a rainy day, why don't you go in and reorganize your closets? If you do, here are a few tips you might keep in mind. First, go through the closet and clean everything out. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but it's the best way to look at what you have and begin to make some choices because it's all about choice. If you haven't worn anything in a full year, that means you have all four seasons or at least you have your spring and summer and your fall and winter. If you haven't worn it in a year, you need to get rid of it. And this is an opportunity for you to do something for someone less fortunate. Donate it to Goodwill or some other charity where someone less fortunate will have an opportunity to wear something nice that you're going to discard. Take this for instance. Maybe it worked at one time, it's just not me anymore, it's gotta go. The thing to remember here is efficiency. If you organize based on color and how you wear your clothes, well, it just makes getting up and getting dressed in the morning that much more efficient. For instance, here I have all shirts and I've organized them based on color. Starting over here with bright colors, in reds, so forth, to blues, to grays, and into brown over here. Oh, and here's another idea. For scarves, I like to go ahead and tie them on a clothes hanger like this makes it really handy. They're always sliding off and falling onto the floor. Now, speaking of the floor, if we move a little closer, there's a way you can use some extension rods to work on those shoes. So if you notice, I've got all this space between the bottom of the clothes and the floor. Wasted space. I can put certainly shoes across the bottom here on the floor, but I've got this intermediate area that I could fill. By taking a couple of extension rods like this, so you have this one in place, I'm just gonna put this one in here. Then you just take the shoes, place them up there, and hey, you've doubled your shoe space in your closet. On a rainy day, my favorite thing to do is cozy up and read my favorite design books. And whether you're on a day bed like this one, in your own bed, or any nook around your house, the key to comfort is all about layering. The key to layering and comfort on your bed is the blanket, and a cotton blanket's great for any time of year. I love to layer that over a quilt so you have options for warmth. And the pillow is the most luxurious part of the bed. I love to layer my pillows, so a great lumbar pillow for back support, a bolster's perfect for resting to read those books or prop under your knees, and then of course, the perfect sleeping pillow, soft enough for a little nap. And the great thing about this pillow is it has a pop of color to brighten up your rainy day. So try these layering tips to design outside your comfort zone. Coming up, Bill Lubick shows us how Rutgers is making the most of a rainy day. Over at Rutgers Earth Center, they're teaching the next generation about getting the most from one of our most important natural resources. It's important for children and adults to both know how to conserve water. The three biggest issues we're going to have in our nation uh, in the long term is going to be fresh water, a safe food supply, and it's going to be an adequate source of energy. A rain garden is actually an area that we set aside based on the amount of runoff that we have calculated from a roof or from another area that has an impervious surface. For kids, it's great because there's a lot of flowering plants with a lot of color and a lot of interesting smells. The first step that we do is we'll go in, we'll dig down as deeply as we possibly can and put in compost along with other mixtures of soil and planting materials so that we allow that area to drain properly. Then we plant the plants that are the most uh, resilient in high water conditions in the center 
and then those that would require drier conditions on the very edge. We'll build the rain guarding accordingly to how much rainfall we would get during an average one to two inches of rain. You'll see that we have rain barrels and we encourage children to build rain barrels at their own home. And then what we do is we set them up with a spigot at the bottom. We cut out the tops, set it up so that it has a screen on top so that it can collect rainwater, but it doesn't allow mosquitoes to lay their eggs in the water. Then we set up any kind of drain pipe from a roof that'll funnel right into the rain barrel. In the last process, we try to elevate the rain barrel, and by elevating the rain barrel, we'll get greater water pressure through our entire system. And this is a living roof, which has a lot of plants that are adapted to low water conditions. So they don't require you know, three to four inches of soil. We need to use gray water. We need to conserve, utilize any water that's running off of roofs instead of just letting it run off into areas. There's more garden style after the break. When the weather's like this, I'm heartened by a quote from Longfellow. He said, after all, the best thing one can do when it's raining is to let it rain. Makes sense to me. I hope in today's show you've picked up some ideas that you can use during those rainy seasons. And I hope that the rain will bring your garden a lot of bounty. For Garden Style, I'm Alan Smith. <laughs>